we're going to do, and, and really the foundation to discovering your purpose, what we believe here at High Ridge Church is that every single one of you has a gift. Um, and we refer to these in the church world as spiritual gifts. And so what I believe and what I want to do for you is I want, you, I want to help you as a Christian, for those of you that profess Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to help you discover, oh, that's my mom right there. Y'all give it up for my mama right there walking in. I just, I just embarrass her. Love you, mama. Thank you so much for being here. She's here helping us with the kids. You're awesome, mom. I love you. My number one fan. Thanks for sitting on the front row. So what we believe here is that every single person, and again, what we just read from Romans is that every single person has a spiritual gift, okay? And, and so what we try to do here at Howard Ridge Church is when we say we want to help you discover your purpose, what we're trying to do is help you to discover how God has designed you. Because we believe if you can figure out how God's designed you, you will figure out what your destiny is. Your design will reveal your destiny, and so what I believe is if I can figure out how God has made me as a human being, what's unique about Zach Greider, um, then I can figure out what God has for me and where he's wanting to take me. And so what we're going to do throughout this series is we're going to talk about spiritual gifts. And so as we get ready to do that, I want to I bring some definition to a couple of things, all right, especially for those of you that may be new to church. Um, some of you may be wondering, okay, what is a spiritual gift? Well, here's the definition of a spiritual gift. A spiritual gift is any, everyone say any, Ability that is empowered by the Holy Spirit and used in any ministry of the church. So it's any ability, okay? Now, I'm about to break down three categories of spiritual gifts here in just a moment. We're going to look at all the spiritual gifts defined in Scripture. But I also want you to understand that when, when the Bible defines spiritual gift, this is not an exhaustive list of gifts, okay? So, for example, you're not going to see uh, the ability to sing as a spiritual gift in the list that I'm about to, to give you. But I think we all can agree that's a spiritual gift. What Pastor Drew and Pastor Hannah are able to do with their voices is absolutely incredible. Can I get an amen? amen? So I want you to also understand that if you don't hear a gift on one of these lists that you don't identify with, it doesn't mean that you don't have a gift. It may mean one or two things. Either one, you haven't discovered your gift that's listed in one of these lists. Or two, you have an ability that is not referenced here. Nonetheless, a spiritual gift, here's the key. It is an ability that you have that is unique to you, that is empowered by the Holy Spirit. And it is used for the church. Okay, so is everybody tracking with me on that? That's what a spiritual gift is. It's not, for me, I'm, I'm, let's see, I'm good at drawing, but that's not a spiritual gift. Okay, it's not empowered by the Holy Spirit, all right? So also don't just think about things that you're good at. We're looking for things that are inspired and empowered by the Holy Spirit, okay? Now, three categories of spiritual gifts in the Bible. Here's the first one. There are ministry gifts. Okay, you find these in Ephesians chapter 4. Um, and this list will, in will include apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers. Now, hear this. Not everyone gets one of these gifts, Okay, um, this particular set of spiritual gifts, again, ministry gifts, these are only giving, given to some. Okay, so not everyone is called, and, and Apostle Paul addresses this later in the New Testament, not everyone's called to be an apostle or a prophet or an evangelist or a pastor or a teacher. Okay, so that again is, re, is referred to as ministry gifts. The second group of gifts that we find in Scripture is called the manif manifestation gifts. Okay, and I know this is going to be a lot of information, but I need to build a foundation for you for this series. Okay, so is everybody still with me? Okay, I hope you get something from this. The second group of gifts is the manifestation gifts. These are found in 1 Corinthians 12. Um, for many of you, these will be the ones that scare you a little bit, the ones that weird you out, especially those of you that have like a Baptist, Southern Baptist background. And I can say that confidently because that's my background as well. These gifts would include wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, miraculous powers, prophecies, spiritual discernment, speaking in tongues, and the interpretation of tongues, okay? That is what's referred to as the manifestation gifts. They're supernatural, okay? It's when you see one of these, you go, okay, that, there's something supernatural about that. That's what these particular gifts are, okay? Now, the third group of gifts that we're going to find is the ones that we just read about in Romans 12, and this, everyone say this. I'm just making sure you're with me. This is the group of gifts that we're going to spend seven weeks on. These are referred to as the motivational gifts. These are going to include, there are seven of these gifts, prophecy, serving, teaching, exhortation, or also known as encouragement, generosity, leadership, and mercy. 
Now, we believe, according to Romans 12, and what we just read just a moment ago, that every single person in this room has one of these gifts. Now, the first two groups, again, ministry or the manifestation gifts, we believe those are, those are only given to some. And, and, and as the Holy Spirit sees fit, as Paul would say it. But we believe that according to Romans 12, that every single person in this room, and this is why we're going to spend seven weeks on it, every single person in this room, all of us have one of these gifts on this list. And so what I want to do over the next few weeks is help you discover which one of these seven is actually a spiritual gift that you have. Now, a couple of things you need to understand. First, um, your spiritual gifts are not limited to just one of these. So I don't want you to put yourself in a box. If you discover throughout this series that, that your spiritual gift in Romans 12, your motivational gift is leadership, I don't want you to think, okay, that's my gift, so there, I have no other gifts, because that's not the case either. You may have, you're going to have one of these gifts, but you may also have another gift. For example, I'm called to be a pastor. But my spiritual gift is prophecy, okay? And I don't want you to freak out for those of you who don't know what that is. And, like, I'm not saying that I, I speak special revelation or anything like that. And we'll talk more about that next week. But my gift of prophecy, and exa for example, some of you experienced it already here at Howard Church. What I mean by my gift of prophecy is mean that, means that when I'm teaching and I'm preaching, some of you feel like there's a spotlight on you and I'm speaking directly into your situation. You know what I'm talking about? That's the gift of prophecy. And I don't know anything about your situation. And so at the end of the day, my spiritual gift on this list is prophecy, but my ministry gift is pastor. Are you tracking with me on that? So as you go on this journey over the next seven weeks, as we help you discover what your motivational gift is, don't let that put you in a box. Just let that be another step for you in seeking your purpose and discovering your purpose. Amen? All right, so what we're going to do today is we're not going to go through all these, all right? That's what we're going to do for the next seven weeks. We're gonna, I'm going to spend a week on each one of these gifts, but what I want to do today is continue to build on this foundation of spiritual gifts because I need you to understand that as you go on this journey over the next seven weeks and even for the rest of your life as a Christian, I think there are some questions that you're going to have that we're going to need to answer today that's going to help you build on this foundation of discovering your purpose. All right? So if you're taking notes today, the first question that we're going to ask today and answer is this. Why do we have spiritual gifts? Now, I, I don't know about you, but, but the whole idea of spiritual gifts was a new concept to me as a Christian. And that happened about seven years ago when I first got to Howard's Church. Now, I had read about them in the New Testament, but I hadn't been taught on them or really understood them. And so I never really sought them. I never went on this, on this journey as a Christian trying to discover what is the spiritual gift that God has given me. So many of you may be in the same place, so I think we need to answer this question. Why do you as a Christian need to go on a journey of discovering your spiritual gift? Why do we have spiritual gifts? Here's the first reason we have spiritual gifts. It's a part of your identity. The first reason that you need to discover what your spiritual gift is, is because it's a part of your identity. The reason that 87% of Christians responded to the question, what is your unique calling? Why are you here on this earth with, I have no idea, is because they haven't fully embraced their identity as a Christian in Christ. And so what's beautiful about the spiritual gift is, here, here's what's amazing about it. In, in eternity past, when God was planning all this out, when God decided he was going to speak the world into existence, the universe into existence, when he was thinking about you as a human being and, and, and you being in, in Graham, Texas in 2019, as he was planning out your life, God decided, okay, for you, Jack, this is going to be your specific gift. For you, Sydney, this is going to be your specific gift. And for you, Zach, this is going to be your specific gift. And God, in eternity past, laid out his plan for your life, his specific plan for your life, and decided he was going to give you a unique spiritual gift. And because of that, it's a part of who you are in Christ. Now, here's the beauty of this. This is what I love about this. The fact that your spiritual gift is a part of your identity, watch this, this is so good. It means that whether you have relationships in, relationships in your life, success in your life, um, uh, money in your life, a career, stuff, a house, a car, whether you have those things or not, listen to me, your life still has meaning. So, so let me say it like this. Some of you feel like, well, I don't know what my purpose is. And the reason you respond with that is because you, you haven't had the success that you've wanted yet in your career. 
Your, your bank account really isn't where you would like it to be. You really haven't done anything meaningful in this life. And because you don't have those things, or because they're not at the place you want them to be, you feel like you still have yet to discover your purpose. The flip side of that is, some of you in this room, you would say, I, my life has no meaning and it has no purpose because I'm working two jobs just to get by. I've been divorced a few times. I don't have anyone in my life. I don't have any real friends in my life. I don't have any money. And I have no success. I have no accolades. And so some of you in this room, because that's your life, you think you have no purpose and no meaning. And because that's where you're at in your situation, you think that God doesn't have a plan for your life. And what's beautiful about spiritual gifts is that everyone, again, according to Romans 12, every single one of us in this room, we have one of these gifts. What does that mean? God has a plan for your life. And whether you have success or money or not, it doesn't matter. Whether you have relationships or not, it doesn't matter. You are identified because you are a son and daughter of Jesus Christ, not because of your success or your relationships. You are identified as a son and daughter of Jesus Christ, and your spiritual gift is another proof and evidence that God has a plan for your life. Come on, somebody. That should get you excited. So listen, when you come across someone who's struggling with suicidal thoughts or, man, my life has no meaning, I work over here and I have no plans for my life and I don't have a five-year plan and I don't have a 401k, when you run across someone like that, as a Christian, you can inspire them and get them excited. Listen, those things don't matter because at the end of the day, God has a gift that he's placed inside of you, whether you've discovered it or not, God has a plan for your life because your identity, friend, is not found in all that other stuff or lack thereof. That gets me fired up. I should just preach on that the rest of the day. So why do we have spiritual gifts? One is identity. Here's the second reason God has given you this spiritual gift. It's to, to the, equip the church. So not only has he given it to you as a part of your identity, he's given it to you to equip the bride of Christ, the church. 1 Corinthians 14, 12 says this, So with yourself, since you are eager for manifestations of the Spirit, strive to excel in building up the church. In context here, the Apostle Paul is talking about the manifestation gifts. But the principle is gifts, period. Use your gifts for what? Building up the church. Listen, it's, we're here for each other, not for these walls. Do you understand what I'm saying? You've got to understand that church is not a building, it's a family. And God has given you your spiritual gift, one, as a part of your identity, but two, to build each other up. For each other, those of us in this room, we're to encourage one another with our gifts. My job and my purpose is to use my voice to build and encourage people. And the way I do that within the body of Christ is by preaching. Are you tracking with me on that? So my gift, I'm using my voice. That's my purpose. It's written in my journal. My purpose is to use my voice to build and encourage people. It's why every time I pray before I, we open up the scriptures, I always pray, Holy Spirit, use my voice to build and encourage your people. Because I want my gift to be empowered by the Holy Spirit. And so I'm using my gift to build you up. And your job as a Christian, now if you call this your church home and you're a Christian, now your responsibility is also to discover what your gift is and use it to bless and build the rest of us. Are you tracking with me on that? So that's why it's important to equip the church. The last reason why we have spiritual gifts, is for others. So not only is it a part of our identity, not only are we supposed to use it within the body of Christ, I love this one right here, we're to take it out into the world. So your spiritual gift is also to be used for others. 1 Peter 4.10 says, as each has received a gift, use it. Okay, this is a gift. Again, your spiritual gift, your identity, what God's given you, that, that gift, that ability that's empowered by the Holy Spirit, you are to use it to serve one another as good stewards of God's varied grace. So here's what I love about your spiritual gift. You're not just supposed to use it as a part of your identity to make you feel good. You're not just supposed to use it to build God's church. You're supposed to use it in your family, in your business, in your school, in our community, and throughout our world. So for me, what that looks like is like my gift, I try to use my gift outside of here. It's building up and encouraging my kids. It's using my words to invest in them and build them up and cheer them on and encourage them. It's me sitting down at lunch with you guys or, or coffee and, and listening to where you're at in life. And then in that moment, my number one purpose is to use my voice to build you up and encourage you. When I go out in, in schools or I go to meetings out in the, in, in the community or in our state, I use my voice to build and encourage people. My voice is not limited to this room. Your spiritual gift, friend, is not limited to Sunday mornings. 
Now, many of you, and I'm looking around, I see a lot of orange lanyards in this room. Some of you are already using your spiritual gift. You've embraced it as your identity. You're using it to build the body of Christ. But also, we want to use it outside the walls of the church. Use your spiritual gift out in the world. Because watch this, church. When we embrace it as our identity, when we use it to build the church, and when we use it to encourage others, then we are glorifying God with our life. Amen? This is why we have spiritual gifts. The next question I want to answer today is, okay, Zach, I, I know why we have spiritual gifts, but, but how do I find my spiritual gift? This is the one that a lot of people want to a- a- answer. Like, okay, Zach, this is great. I see all this, but how do I actually find what my spiritual gift is? Okay, so let, let, me, let me preface this with a statement. First, as a Christian, you have to understand that you are able to operate in other gifts without receiving the full measure of that gift, okay? Now, I know for me, you're like, what in the world does that mean? Okay, so here's what that means. Think think as a parent. Many of you as parents, you've probably sat down with your child when they were younger and read a book to them before they went to bed. And because children are awesome and they ask great questions unfiltered, at some point, you were probably asked, Mommy and Daddy, what does that mean? And in that moment, you had to explain the story that you just read them. Or maybe you were reading like a Bible story to them, and you had to explain to your child what that Bible story actually meant. Now, you just operated in the gift of teaching, but it may not mean that you're actually, that is your spiritual gift. Is that, are you tracking with me? All of us in this room just sang and operated in a spiritual gift of singing and using our voice, but I think many of us, especially me, will attest to you that is not my spiritual gift. Are you tracking with me on that, okay? So again, don't limit yourself to the spiritual gift that you actually find. Know that sometimes as believers, we will operate in gifts, but that does not mean that is our specific gift. We have not been given the full measure of that gift, okay? I don't, I don't know, y'all still with me? Let me give you another example just to prove my point, all right? The Bible says that we are all to go out into the world and make disciples. We are all to share our faith with others. We understand that, right? We can be in agreement. The Bible says that. That does not make all of us evangelists. You tracking with me? So even though we, share, we are to share our faith with others, it does not mean that we have been given the gift of the evangelist. Okay? So understand that. That's very important in this. Okay? So now, moving on. How do we find our spiritual gift? The most important thing that I can tell you in this journey is that you've got to commit to pursuing it. Okay, hear me out very closely. Okay, this is so important. When it comes to seeking out your identity and discovering your purpose, and as we go out through these next seven weeks and trying to find out what your motivational gift is, you have got to understand that there's not a formula to this, and for a lot of you, it's not going to happen overnight. But what you've got to commit to on the front end, and what I'm asking you to do today, is commit to pursuing your purpose. In other words, you're going to spend as much time as it takes to discover what your purpose is and what your spiritual gift is. Because what I don't want to happen, and a fear that I have, is that we're going to finish this series, Discover Purpose, and there are going to be some of you that have taken a spiritual gifts test, and and you've studied, and you've taken notes, and you've still really to discover what your spiritual gift is, and you're going to give up at that point. You cannot give up. You have got to commit to going on this journey with the Holy Spirit and with Jesus until you find out what your spiritual gift is. You've got to pursue. And look, here's the Here's the tenacity that we've got to pursue this with. A lot of Americans and a lot of us in this room, we've spent a lot of energy and a lot of money and a lot of time investing in ourselves and our careers. So, so a lot of us, we spent a lot of money on going to school and we spent a lot of time and energy on, on getting better at our craft and trainings and, and, and conferences and all this stuff to get better at what we do for a career. We should take that same intensity and apply it to our spiritual gift. So for you as a Christian, all that time that we spend pursuing our careers and getting better in our crafts, how much more should be said of our spiritual gift? Because your identity, church, remember, is not going to be found in those other things. Your identity and your fulfillment is going to be found in your identity in Christ, which is, again, a part of that is pursuing and understanding and defining your spiritual gift. So you've got to pursue, pursue, pursue. So right now, I want you, if you agree with it, if you say, you know what, Pastor Jack, okay, today I will commit to pursuing, discovering my purpose. If you do say, I'm in. You've got to pursue. 
Because again, I, I don't want you to walk away from this series feeling defeated. Because you're like, man, all these other people have found out what their spiritual gift is, but I haven't discovered mine. And man, I still don't know. I still can't answer that question. Why am I? If you're at that point, that's okay. But just continue to pursue, pursue, pursue. All right? It took me five years as a Christian in ministry before I figured out what my purpose is. But the key to my journey was I was committed to Jesus. Hey, I'm going to do this until I figure it out. Sooner or later, the day will come where I will be able to, to explain to you what my purpose is and why I'm here on this earth. And let me just tell you, church, let me, let me encourage you with this. It's amazing. I, I love knowing what my purpose is. I, I don't spend my week looking forward to the weekend when I'm off. I spend my week excited about this moment. I get excited about preaching. Now, I'm nervous every time, but I get excited about doing this. You know why? Because when I'm operating in my gift, here's what I realized. I was made for this. And see, a lot of you, when you discover what your spiritual gift is, when you step into that, that's the same experience you're going to have. Some of you love going to work. And you love going to work because you love your job, because you're operating in something that's empowered by the Holy Spirit. Some of you hate going to work. And that's okay too. But at the end of the day, the goal is to get you to find your spiritual gift. In church, when you do find it again, you're going to experience what I've experienced. And that is, man, I was made for this. I was made for this. I love getting to use my gift. All right, so... How do you find your spiritual gift? We have created a tool for you, okay? On the app, on the High Ridge app, or on the High Ridge website, we have uploaded a spiritual gifts test that is going to help you by answering these questions. It's going to take about 10 to 15 minutes. I think it's about 35 to 40 questions. And what you're going to do at some point, I want to encourage you to do it today because I want you to know, according to this test, what your motivational gift is so that you're ready when we start preaching on it in this series. But you're going to go on the app, and you'll see spiritual gifts test. It's one of the first things you pull up. If you don't have the app, that's totally fine. Just go to the website. Go to highridgechurch.com, go to Graham, and go to serving. Everyone say serving. serving. Click on serving, and you can take the spiritual gifts test. And here's what's beautiful about this test. It's going to take you through a list of questions. And when you're done with that test, it's going to compile your answers and it's going to point you in the direction that, hey, according to who you are and the way that you answer these questions, this is most likely your motivational gift. That's how easy we've made this one for you. So what I want to encourage you to do is, listen, if you don't know what your motivational gift is, then go and take that test. And again, don't let it put you in a box, but let it help you start the journey to discovering your purpose and who God's made you. Amen? Come on, so you're going to take the test. If you are, say, I'm in. The Holy Spirit heard that. You're held accountable to it now. Take the test. All right, last question. So that's how you're going to find your spiritual gift. Again, um, the, the key is pursue. But secondly, if you want to know your motivational gift, we've made that test available for you. Okay, and again, I've taken it as well, and that's where prophecy uh, was revealed to me as my spiritual gift. And so go and take that test. The last question today that we want to answer, how do we strengthen our spiritual gift? Okay, so um, I understand that we have them, why we have them. I understand that I can find out what my gift is. Okay, Zach, so I go and take this test, and I figure it out. I know what my spiritual gift is. Now how do I actually strengthen that gift? Well, Romans 12, 6 says this. Paul gives us the answer, and we've already read it. He says, having gifts that differ according to the grace given to us. Again, remember, it's a gift. Let us use them. Everyone say, use them. If prophecy in proportion to our faith. Look, how, how do you strengthen your spiritual gift? You use it. <laughs> Listen, how do you get better at volleyball? You go play volleyball. How do you get better at baseball and hitting the baseball? You don't wait till the game gets there. You go get in the batting cages. Are you tracking with me on? We do this in all other aspects of our life. How do we get better at reading? We read books. How do we get better at taking tests? We take tests. So as human beings, we do this in every other area of our life, but a lot of times we limit our spiritual gift on this one. So what I need you to understand is that maybe, hey, maybe you're sitting in here and you have the gift of prophecy and, and God has given you the same gift he's given me, which is to use your voice to build and encourage people. Don't stand up here and look at me and think, okay, I think that's my gift, but it sure doesn't look like Pastor Zach's gift. Now listen, the reason my gift looks like it does is because I've been using it since I was in eighth grade. And the more that I use it, the more the Holy Spirit develops that gift within me. So what is the key to strengthening your spiritual gift? You've got to use it. You've got to use the gift that God has given you. Well, Zach, what if I step out and it's, it's, I'm not as good as so-and-so, and man, this guy's really good at leadership, and I'm not, nothing compared. Look, stop comparing yourself to others. Can we agree to that? No more comparison. 
Listen, I, I fall into that trap all the time. Can I just be transparent and honest with you today? I, I fall into the trap of comparison all the time. You know what happens to me on Sundays? This is embarrassing, but I'm just going to tell you because I love you and we're family. You're not going to tell anybody. I get home on Sundays and I get on Instagram. And, and, and here, here's, the, here's what happens on Sundays for me. I get on Instagram and I follow a lot of churches and a lot of speakers. And when I get on Instagram, it's like, let the comparison begin. Man, his clip looks a lot better than mine. Man, he's got cooler white shoes than I do. Man, this dude's got, that's exactly, I fall into that trap all the time. But I have to be reminded all the time as a Holy Spirit, stop comparing who God has made you to be to how he's made others to be. When you embrace that identity, friend, that God has made you unique, you won't compare your spiritual gift to others. At the end of the day, how do you strengthen it? Don't compare to others. Let others inspire you. Yes, that's okay. But at the end of the day, you've just got to step out. You've got to jump out of the nest, and you've got to use it. You've got to use your spiritual gift. Thank you, Darby, for the clap. Awesome. You've got to use it. Listen to me, friend. My job, the whole reason I am in Graham, Texas, is not to entertain you. It is to take you on a journey. I am not a preacher. I am a tour guide. And my job and my success in this town and in this church and in your life will be measured by how many steps did I help you take towards Jesus. And my desire for you in this series and today is for you to grab hold of the idea. Man, God has given me a spiritual gift. I don't know what it is yet, but I'm going to pursue it with all that I have. And then once you do find it, because that day will come if you'll pursue My hope is that when you do find it, you're going to use it. Use it to to help it build this identity that you have in Christ. Use it to build the church in each other. Use it to to build your family and, and your business and your company and your schools and in our community. Use it to bring glory to God. That is my hope for you in this series. You have a spiritual gift. And look, friend, today I want you to meditate on this idea. I want you to meditate on the idea that God has a plan for your life. And despite your accolades, your success, your fame, all that stuff, or the lack thereof, listen to me, friend. You have a reason to wake up tomorrow. Every person in here, I don't care what you did this weekend. I don't care what you did last weekend. I don't care the horrible things that you've done in your past. What I know is that my God is a God of redemption. And he has a plan for your life. Whether you want to accept that or not, it's reality. And tomorrow when you wake up, you should wake up with this excitement. Going into school, going into your work, and going into your jobs, not knowing that that's the end goal, but knowing, hey, I've got a purpose and I've got a reason for being here. And it's not just for making good grades. It's not just for being successful. It's not just getting a paycheck so I can feed my family. It's more than that. It's to bring glory to God's name by using my spiritual gift. And so when we understand that, it gives us a new motivation for living this life. So that's my hope for you. And that's the journey, if you'll commit to pursuing, that I'm going to take you on over the next few weeks. Are you excited? If you're excited, say Shazam. Let's do it. Let me pray for you this morning. Lord, I lift up every single person in the room this morning, God. And and I'm just so excited to share your word. And God, I'm excited that, that you've given us a spiritual gift. You've given us something that makes us unique. You've given us something to wake up to and and to follow and pursue after. You've given us something, God, that gives our life meaning. So God, for every person in this room that's ever questioned that, that's ever questioned their purpose or what you have for them, God, I pray that today they would grab hold of this idea. And I pray that today they would commit to going on this journey over the next seven weeks and or however long it takes to pursuing you and pursuing discovering who they are in you. And God, I pray for all of us, including myself, that as we discover these gifts, that we would embrace them, we would use them to to build the church, and we would use them to encourage others in our families, in our businesses, in our schools, and in our community. May we discover who you've called us to be, and may we pursue you as we fall desperately in love with you. So thank you, Lord. Now, with heads bowed and eyes closed, I have one more prayer for you this morning. Maybe you're excited about this topic. Maybe you're excited about going on this journey. But if you're in this room and you've never experienced a life-changing relationship with Jesus, friend, you will never discover your spiritual gift. 
because you have yet to receive the ultimate gift, and that's your salvation. That's a life-changing relationship with Jesus. So if you're sitting in here today and you'd say, you know what, Zach, that's me. I, I, I want to go on this journey to falling in love with Jesus, but the reality is, is I've never surrendered my life to him. I've tried church and I've tried religion, but I've never tried a relationship. If that's you, friend. I'm going to pray a prayer in just a moment. And I want to invite you to pray after me quietly to yourself. And you could use your own words if you'd like. But all we're going to do is simply surrender our life to Jesus in this moment. So if that's you, friend, pray with me quietly to yourself. Dear God, I know I'm a sinner. God, I know I've messed up. God, right now in this moment, I want to turn from doing life my way. And I want to start doing life your way. And Jesus, right now, I want to invite you into my life to be my Lord and my Savior. And I want to thank you, Jesus, for just now saving me. Now, with heads bowed and eyes closed, there are some of you here today that you just prayed that prayer with me. And I'm not going to call you out. I'm not going to embarrass you or have you come forward or any of that kind of stuff. I simply want to celebrate your decision. If you're sitting in this room this morning and you just prayed that prayer with me, no one is looking up, no one's looking around, would you just lift up your hand real quick? Just those that prayed that prayer, just lift your hand up real quick. No one's looking up, no one's looking around. Awesome, I got you guys. Awesome. Just those that prayed that prayer. Just keep your hand up if I didn't see it in the back, center section. Got you back there, brother. Awesome. Now, with heads bowed and eyes closed, those of you that prayed and raised your hand, would you just look up at me for just a moment? Just those that prayed. Man, I'm so excited about your decision today. And this is just the beginning of a life-changing relationship, and we want to help you on this journey that you're starting today. So here's what I would love for you to do. There's a card in the seat back in front of you, and if you're on the front row, it's behind you. You can reach back, reach back and grab it. There's a green card. You can see it here on the screen. It says response card. It's not very much information. It's just a couple of things. And look, we're not going to hassle you or anything like that. We simply want to help you take the next step in your relationship with Jesus. So if you would take that card and fill it out, when we dismiss here in just a minute, just take that card to the information center, hand it to one of my team members, and we're going to give you a brand new Bible for coming and hanging out with us today and for taking that step with Jesus. And I'm so excited for you. Hey, church, let's give it up for those that pray to receive Christ. Come on. <laughs> Show them some love. Listen, just a couple of things for you before we dismiss. Uh, the first is this. Sign up for a group today. Um, We are launching groups this week. If you're looking to find freedom in your life, if you're looking for another opportunity to to discover what your spiritual gift is, sign up for a group. Um, In our super series groups, and you'll know what a super series group is when you sign up. It's it's one of the options. We're actually going to be going through a a study that talks about you discovering your purpose and and why it's so important to go on this journey. And so not only are you going to hear about it on weekends, you're going to hear about it in small group. And so I want to encourage you to go sign up for a group. We have 35 groups or more available all throughout the week. And so please, please, please go and sign up for a group. Get in a relationship with other believers, all right? The second thing I want to remind you of is baptism weekend. September 15th, we're going to have baptisms in service. Uh, For those of you that just prayed to receive Christ and gave your life to Christ, or any of you that have surrendered your life to Jesus and since that moment have not been water baptized, we would love to help you take that step as your spiritual family. So you can sign up online or you can just go out to one of our team members and say, hey, I want to sign up for baptisms, all right? And we're going to have everything ready for you that weekend. It's going to be an awesome, awesome weekend, all right? Go ahead and stand to your feet. Again, sign up for...